I am joined by Michael Collins, who flew on Gemini 10 and Apollo 11. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Now, you were part of the space program when really it was in its infancy, and there were a lot of experiments going on. Did you ever feel like a guinea pig as you were flying around? Oh, frequently, yes, yes, yes. Because, uh, of course, uh, guinea pigs are always getting injected and subjecting themselves to the latest medical advances. and. And we had a fairly uh, strong, but fortunately a very friendly and competent uh, medical component to our training. What did we learn from that that helps us now with long-term space flight? Well, there's, there are a number of things, uh, many of which I have just read about. For instance, effects uh, on the, the blood supply to your eye, which changes uh, in weightlessness. Uh, of course, we felt stretched out. We actually were a little bit taller because uh, the space between your vertebrae extends a bit. Th these things are, uh, are, are not important at all for the kind of work we were doing, you know, to the moon and back in eight days. Uh, not a medical challenge in that, but if you're talking about several years to Mars and back, then the medical component, the medical considerations uh, become extremely important, perhaps paramount to such a trip. Now, when you were growing up, did you ever read science fiction? I did, yeah. I, I was a Buck Rogers fan. Uh, I used to prowl around in the caverns of Mongo, and uh, I'm quite familiar with them. If you... Do you think that influenced you wanting to be an astronaut? I, not really. Uh, my coming into being an astronaut was sort of a stair-step program. Uh, I had an opportunity to go to West Point, which was a, a, f a free education, and that was a very important consideration. And, and then when I graduated, I drifted over into the Air Force, became a pilot. One thing led to another. I was a test pilot at Edwards, and, uh, and, and that, at that time was a, a good entry point uh, to the astronaut program. Now, have you ever experienced failure? I applied uh, for the second group of astronauts, and I didn't make it. Uh, I, I was at that time just a brand new uh, test pilot, and they said, yeah, you don't know enough. So I was very disappointed. It was a big flop. It was a big failure. And the next time I lucked out and came into it. How did you deal with that, going from being turned down to, to reapplying? It ain't pleasant, uh, I will certainly say that. Uh, no, but you try to analyze uh, uh, what they liked about you, what they didn't like about you, and if you could do anything about the parts that they didn't like, well, you, you gave that a lot of thought. What was your favorite part of the trip to the moon and back? <laughs> Seeing the parachutes open. <laughs> I... Tell me about the importance of STEM. Well, I, I am very much in favor of um, science, technology, engineering, and math. But, but I think that's a rather incomplete uh, description of what should be STEAM, S-T-E-E-M, with the emphasis on English. Uh, perhaps I've known um, too many inarticulate engineers in my time, but uh, I, I, I think uh, a firm background in English is important no matter what particular career field you're in. And I'd even, I'd, I'd push it even one step beyond just English and to say poetry, for example. Uh, I mean, I, I like so much poetry. Uh, John Milton comes to mind. You, Paradise Lost, you know it? You know the plot? Barely. Okay, well, what it, the, the plot was in, um, in STEM language, it's uh, some guy fell off a cliff and maybe God pushed him. Uh, in STEAM it is, you know what it is in STEAM? No. Him the almighty power hurled headlong, flaming from the ethereal heights with hideous ruin and combustion down to bottomless perdition there to dwell in adamantine chains and penal fire who durst defy the omnipotent arms. So, see, I like the, I like the second version better than I do the first version, but uh, that's, that's my, that's that was my difference. story. That's my anecdote. Awesome. Anyway. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you.